things like I'm not an expert, I'm not a scholar. No I'm, one is I'm right. Willing to learn. Okay. I'm open minded. So I don't believe I know everything. Okay. And if, and if I learn something new, I'll, yeah. I'll think that's a blessing because I've learned something new. Why not? You know? And um I mean, ultimately, if, if you don't eat pork or whatever, the, the power to you, but it's not going to be something that's going to like determine your yeah. salvation. Uh, Acts 10, yeah, 9. Yeah. Shall I read it all? Go for yeah. it. Yeah, all right, cool. It. So, there was a certain man in Caesarea oh, called sorry. Cornelius. You want to go all the way to 1 or just 9? Uh, that's where the vision happens. Oh, there you go. All right, all right. so there what we do, what yeah. we do, we'll read from 9. Yeah. Um, and and do, do, do you agree that scripture, I interpret scripture? Ah, okay. Yeah. So, let me make my position on this, Claire. The Bible is indeed foundational for the Christian faith, right? Mm. It has the compendium of all the stories of people from the beginning of, uh, from the beginning up until uh, the um, early first century, right? Uh, regarding how we live our Christian lives and the story of God interacting with human beings. Great. Mm. Now, in order to interact with the Bible and exegete the Bible, it is okay to go outside of the Bible. There are certain things that concord in the Bible and that's great. But the Bible isn't a book about everything. So oftentimes, we need to go outside and look at our own real world to confirm what's in the Bible. So I have no issue, you know, re uh, relying on on the, the, the book of nature, yeah, yeah, yeah. per se, so we can, or, we can or use experts or fathers. You can, but yeah. you can also use additional things as well. Right. Yes. So, like, right, so, so for example, so if this is Peter's vision, yeah. and God has revealed a vision to Peter yes. himself specifically, and exclusively, if Peter tells us what that vision meant, and, uh, does uh, that exclude any other private interpretation of the vision? Not necessarily, no, because right. visions can have multiple purposes. And I, I, I was saying that anyway to you. Vision. So it's Peter's vision mm. and Peter's interpretation of the vision, right? But there can be others as well. So, for example, I was telling you just before that, yes, the vision means to go out to the Gentiles. Yeah. However, when you look at Acts 15, which just come after Acts 10, yeah. the disciples tell them, what to do concerning dietary requirements. Mm. It doesn't tell them to not eat pig. Simply don't eat animals that have been A, sacrificed to other gods, mm. and B, strangled. That's should, all. Should we, should we read it? Should we go through go it? For yeah. it? Go for right. it. So, so, do, do you want to go on a little story? Should we start in Matthew 15, 11, mm. see what Jesus says, yeah. go right. to Acts and 10, we'll move on from that and then Acts 15? All right, cool. Let yeah? me turn this on as well. Go ahead. If that's all right, if you guys are... Uh... <coughs> Normally, I have energy for like every day of the week. Yeah, I'm just a little off. Yeah. That's all. You must have been in strap before about 24 hours. Yeah, I first lived there. I, I slept uh, on the bus stop. Yeah, let me give you one of these as well, bro. Um, oh, sure, man. I'll, 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 do, you, do you want me to make sure you that go. you have the right angle so you can get the good camera on? Do you know what it is? I've got a good looking side and I've got a not so good looking oh, so you side. Who told you that? <laughs> I've got, I've got, I've got, yeah, do you know what it is? I've got a weird haircut. <laughs> the barber messed me up. And, um, been there, brother. No, oh, mate, I'm telling you. Okay. Yeah, sure. Th thanks for your patience, everyone. No worries. Okay, so. And you can put it higher. Sorry? You can put it higher. No, it can, it can get us in. Sorry, I don't mind. I'll, um... Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you put the, the camera upwards? You see my both very tall men. Right, okay. <laughs> Boom. Alright, so we're going to read Matthew 15, yeah? Yeah, so let's start at 15. Do you want me to read it? I really enjoy go, reading. Go for it, yeah? go okay. for it. Let's Boom. do 15. We'll read it all, right? Go for it, go for it. Okay, uh, so Matthew. Matthew 15. So, the there looks we like go. I talk the better for me today. 15, uh, 15, 11, I think, yeah. Uh, Matthew... 15. Right, let's go. So then came Jesus, then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem. Yeah? Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. So the context is regarding eating bread. Yeah? And the tradition of the elders. So what a tradition of the elders was, was the Pharisees used to say that you have to wash your hands in a ceremonial way before you eat food. And what they used to say is if you don't wash your hands in a ceremonial way, even if you eat bread, you are defiled. Yeah? 
So they're not saying yes. that bread is defiled, because we know bread is a clean food. But what the Pharisees used to say is if you don't wash your hands before you eat bread, now that is defiled. Yeah? And is this defiling a physical or a spiritual defiling? I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to read. Okay. Yeah? But defiled. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Um, so, the, so then came to Jesus the scribes and the Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem. And bearing in mind, the Pharisees and the scribes are the ones, that they're, 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 they're Jews. So they're fully aware of the Torah, they're fully aware of the food laws. This is in the first century, and they're in Jerusalem. So they're all completely familiar with what the food laws are, yeah? There's no argument about food law here. The argument is, why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands, when they eat bread so it's very clear what the context is but he answered and said to them why do you also transgress the commandments of god by your tradition so, so jesus is emphasizing how important the commandments of god is yeah for god commanded saying honor thy father and mother and he that curseth father or mother let him die to death but you say whoever shall say to his father or mother it is a gift by whosoever thou be profited by me and honor not his father or his mother he shall be free so what this was one of the commandments is honor thy father and mother but what the pharisees used to say is if you dishonor your mother and your father and you give them a bit of money you can get off with that so you can be disrespectful give them some money and that kind of allows you to dishonor your mother and father. So Jesus is saying that they're hypocrites for inventing this, this way of trying to get off with honoring your mother and father. So that's what he meant in that part there. He says, thus you have made the commandments of God of none effect by your tradition. You hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, these people honor, draweth near unto me with their mouth and honoureth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth this defileth a man. So let's remember the context. Bread with dirty hands doesn't defile you. If you eat bread and you haven't done the uh, rabbinical pharisaical ceremony of washing your hands in a funny way if you eat bread that doesn't defile you no one's mentioned meat no one's mentioned food laws no one's mentioned pork they are still talking about the same context the same subjects bread doesn't defile you if you don't wash your hands so here's where i would interject go on him where does it specify that what goeth in a man's mouth is limited only to bread because they specifically mentioned bread in the beginning Sorry? of they specifically mentioned bread and that is the context because right but what specifies that he is speaking only about bread okay so what for, specifies that he's not okay so he, I, I i'm not saying mm. he is not speaking right, okay. only about bread however when he says that it isn't what goes into a man, yeah. but what comes out of a man, yeah. is he implying that what comes out of a man is also bread? No, he's talking about what comes out of the heart. Okay. So if, you're, if you've got any bad words to say, or if you're a murderer, or a cheater, or okay. a fornicator... So you see how you've given spiritual. what comes out a very wide interpretation. Well, it's written in but here. What we went in is, very, is a very small interpretation. Yeah. I say that, that that includes anything. All right. So if somebody drank women's menstrual blood, would that include that as well? Sure. Yeah? So sure. so so if a man drunk women's menstrual blood, that wouldn't defile him. You'd have to well it, it might it might defile you physically. Right, okay. But I say that that's what I asked you before. Mm. This isn't talking about physical defiling. Right, okay. It's spiritual. So if you eat pork, does it defile you physically? Well, not as if it's cooked well. No. Right. So we But it, if you eat any meats, any food mm. that is handled properly, yeah. you will be defiled physically. Right, we, let's go and read him because what we've got to remember is we're in Jerusalem first century and we're going by the standards of Jerusalem first century we're going for, by the standards of Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior we're going by the standards of the Pharisees well, understand the that here his uh, audience is a Jewish one yeah but then later it's a Gentile audience so the rules for the Jews cannot apply to the Gentiles right well, let's let's carry on reading and see what the scripture says yeah so it says then came his disciples and said unto him Knowest 
now that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father have not planted shall be uprooted. Let them alone. They will be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are you also yet without understanding? Do not yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth May go I stop into you there the for a belly. Whatsoever. Yeah. Is that only bread? Well, they're not talking about pork because at this moment they're all abiding by the law so of Moses' food laws. I, I say whatsoever can encompass bread and pork. But you're adding pork into the scripture. I say it can encompass whatever because you're, you're on the other hand restricting it to bread only. But whatsoever, so I'll say this way, mm. if Jesus specifically meant bread, right. he would simply just include it in the commentary. All right. And if he did include it in the commentary, does the, that mean he's only speaking about bread? Well, yes, it would okay. be. Okay, shake my hand on that right now. Yeah, okay, let's carry on. Sure thing. And, and I'm not a scholar. All right. Right, and if I'm wrong, I'll happily hand my hands up to Go it. No for problem, it. because I don't despise being corrected, okay? Go for it. Do not yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth in to the belly and is cast out the draught. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile if a man. Sure. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, fest, fault witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashen hands defileth not a man. So what they're, they're not saying, that they're, they're talking about to eat with unwashing hands does not defile if a man. So that does not supersede when he says whatsoever. Whatsoever includes anything that can go into a person's mouth. Yeah. And the entire context but of at, this would they be is pork? spiritual. But would they have been eating pork? So as Jews, they no. would not have been eating pork. Right, okay. However, so then you can't add how, pork However, in the New Covenant, if they had consumed pork, that action alone would not have been relevant to make them spiritually unclean. Sorry, um, I read that wrong. You didn't, actually. I read that wrong. Right, if we use a New King James Version, it says, these are the things which defile a man, but to eat bread with unwashed hands does not defile a man. I'm and sorry, if there's anyone no, wants to read that no for themselves, there. Um, it does. Do you want to read it? There's no bread there. Do you want to read it? There's no bread there. But to eat, we don't want. It's no bread. No. Okay. Let's, let's say that again. There's no bread there, my friend. Sorry. <coughs> I mean, I, I couldn't look at the Greek. It, maybe uh, if it's there, it's there, but I'll see. Yeah. But where, where, whether or not it says that or not, if, Sorry. if they're talking well, to if they're talking to, if they're talking to Jews, right, and Jews wouldn't be eating pork, why would Jesus need to say that that pork's included? Um, how, how is pork included in that? So I don't think specifically. Well, you 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 can you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no bread even in the Greek. But to eat with unwashing hands. No, yeah, that, there's no bread. So okay, so now understand my position. I am not telling you that Christ instructs his disciples to eat pork. Right. Okay. If you as a Christian do not want to eat pork, fine. For example, I've never eaten a bear, and I don't really want to eat one. It's fine. You can you can control your diet how you like. For example, pork may never be good for you. Who knows? You might have genetic markers that make pork bad for your body. If you don't want to eat it, go ahead. However, you eating it or not eating it will not change your standing with God. Well, can we agree on that? I I, I, I want to clear this up first because okay. I feel that we kind of skimmed over it a little bit. Go yeah. for it. Go go for it. If Jesus, never well, I, ate I do pork. want an answer, please, to, yeah. to, to that question. Does it affect your standing with God? I don't, I don't think it does. I, I don't want to go down that road yet well, without well, clearing up this. Surely there's an objection you have to pork. I've got an objection with pork because it says in Leviticus food laws not to eat pork. Exactly. Yeah? But, okay, so now, are you a Jew? No, I'm not a Jew. Okay, so you will be classified as a non-Jew, a.k.a. a Gentile. Can we clear this up? Is that all right? Well, we'll, we'll get yeah, there. Because okay. I feel like we skimmed over it a little bit. No worries, so, no worries. 
if Jesus is talking to a Pharisee, would the Pharisee be aware of the Levitical food laws? Would they be fully aware of it's it? It's an okay They're Torah assumption scholars, to yeah? make, sure. Yeah, so the, the Pharisees are, are Torah scholars. They know the Levitical food laws. They know that it is the law for them not to eat pork. Agreed? Yeah? Sure, so then we've also got the scribes. They know it's so it's not okay to eat pork. So it, it would be any animal with a with a, a cloven hoof, hoof or and whatever. doesn't chew the cuts, yeah. yeah? And it's, it's specified as, as swine. So then you've got Jesus. Well, it would include camel too, technically. Yeah, yeah, yeah camel, yeah. you can't eat camel, yeah. right? Um, then you've got Jesus, right? He knows the Torah. He sure. knows that it's not okay to eat pork. And he also knows the true interpretation of those rules, which is why often in Matthew he says, you have heard it said X, but I say Y. Right? So because he's a, the, the giver of a Torah, he has a, a ma mastership over the proper interpretation. Do we agree on that? Sorry, I wasn't listening. Say that again. Because Jesus is the giver of a Torah, the law. Yeah, yeah he's he, a spoken word, yeah. But he has mastership over the proper interpretation of those laws. You have heard it said X, but I say to you Y. You have heard it said an eye for an eye, but I say to you, uh, uh, those other things, or, or Moses allowed you to have um, a, a, a divorce with certificates, but I say to you that you, should, you shouldn't have divorce. But he hasn't specified pork, but, clearly. But here's what he's done. He hasn't. Here's what he's done. It is not what goes into a man yeah. that makes him unclean. It's what comes out of a man. No, so again, I get that. Yeah. he is so taking the understanding of the law the Pharisees and giving them the true understanding. Yeah, which is... So they're not made clean by food, but, they're made clean by him. But, so, so what he was showing them was if you don't wash your hands before you eat bread, it can't defile you because the Pharisees accused the disciples of being um, defiled for not washing their hands before they eat bread. We've got to remember the original context, what they're talking about. We, we, we can't go off and add because it says you, you can't add to or take away from. We can't add anything to this or take anything away from it. We can't in, use in our regards own to the core teaching. Interpretation. In, no, no, I disagree with that. In regards to the core teachings, the 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 baseline text, we can't add or remove. Yeah. But interpretation can go as far as it needs to. Interpretation isn't adding to but the then Bible. But personal, private interpretation. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, I I agree that we should have a, a consensus in interpretation. And this can come from whatever tradition we follow uh, within the Christian, the Christian faith. And this is why we shouldn't only lean onto private um, revelation yeah, and that's why we've got to stick to the scripture. And we've got to stick to the context but of the scripture. But here's the issue. I, I have my own biases and, my, and then my own, um, my own history, as mm -hmm. do you. So we can read the same scripture. And if we're only appealing to our level of comprehension, right. we can arrive exactly. at two completely different interpretations. Exactly, that's why we have to allow the scripture to line up with other scripture. So if I read scripture and I read Leviticus and it says, "Thy shall not eat the swine, you shall not touch the carcass, that is a foundation. So if I'm reading Matthew 15 and I think it allows me to eat pork, that means my mental private biasness has now, has now looking at it in a certain way because Jesus is not a hypocrite and he would never go against the Torah and he hasn't come to abolish the law or the prophets he hasn't come to change anything he's come to fulfill so Jesus wouldn't eat pork the Pharisees wouldn't eat pork and nor would the scribes nor would Jesus' disciples none of these people here that are in this context not any of them would even think about eating pork well they're all Jews and yeah. myself and you are not so clearly, <clears throat> but this we don't have to hold to that. Huh? It's not for the Jews. Though, the is law it? is for the Jews. I don't, what it's, laws for the Jews? Huh? What law? The, the, these are uh, uh, Levitical laws. Levitical laws. Uh, for are Jews, only for no, the Jews. No, not for me. Yeah, they ain't for me. So, or you, if you're not a Jew. Do you, do, you, do, you, so do you still think that Jesus is declaring pork clean in this context? Everything is clean in regards to the spiritual effects right. on a person. Can we all, can However, in regards to the physical effects, my friend, if you eat raw pork, you will get sick. Do you think Jesus would have eaten pork? Well, no, because he was a Jew, so he wouldn't have done so. But if we are trying to follow Jesus and walk we, in his we ways... Can't, we, we, work, we work in his ways in a so far as we obey his tenets. We can't replicate his life. We can if we give out, uh, stop eating bacon. 
It's not hard to cut mm. bacon out. Okay, okay. It's not hard. Again, again, again. You know, how hard again. is it to swap your again. Cumberland sausages for a beef sausage? Again. Like, how hard is it? Again, that? seriously. I, I am not trying to yeah. tell you that you have to eat pork. I am simply trying to tell you that whether or not you eat pork does not affect your standing with God. Um, can That's I, all. Can I read a scripture out? Can I well, read well, Isaiah 66. If, if you recall, we were going to go from Matthew right. to Acts 10 yeah, yeah, to yeah. Acts 15. Yeah, we can still do that. If you want to do that and be, because, you come back to Isaiah then. Sure, yeah. be, because don't forget, Acts 15 okay. is for who? Me and you, okay. the Gentiles. All right. And Gentiles is an insult, it means don't you. It, it comes from like goy, which means foreigner. That's all. Every, every culture has their own word for people who are in the culture, people who are outside the culture. Here we call them, you know, migrants or whatever. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is Acts 10. Okay. This is Peter's vision. Yes. Right? I can't interpret Peter's vision to the way I want it to be. I can't read into Peter's vision. Well, Peter gives us an interpretation. So we he does. He, yeah. Peter gives us his own interpretation of his own vision. And if I tell you what Peter's vision means, I, I can't do that. I can't tell you what Peter's vision is all about because Peter tells us what his vision is all about. And, and we can only allow Peter to interpret his own vision because God shows Peter the meaning of the vision. So it says, on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour and he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending upon him as it had been a great sheet knit together in the four corners let down from the earth wherein all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth wild creeping things and fowls of the air and there came a voice peter rise kill and eat and peter said no not so lord for i have never eaten anything common or unclean mm. so how long after peter jesus is declaring pork clean would this have been because Peter's still abiding to the dietary food laws. Because he's Jewish, yeah. But so, so but Peter's not eating pork, and he's, Peter's still abiding to the dietary food laws, right? Someone's killing me with, with the cigarette smoke. It's so bad, please. So Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake to him again and said the second time, what God has cleansed, call not common. So what did God cleanse? you do not call common. So God isn't going, oh, now I'm cleansing all food. He said, what God has already cleansed, you cannot call common. So what God has cleansed is ch chicken, beef and lamb, for example. God didn't cleanse pork. And Peter was abiding to the Levit Levitical food laws, which is why he said, I have never eaten anything common or unclean. So this was done twice, yeah. and the vessel was received up again into heaven. And now Peter doubted. Now Peter doubted himself what the vision would have meant. So Peter's thinking to himself, "Surely God is not trying to tell me to eat unclean food." He's even doubting it himself, right? So then, if you carry on reading down to verses 28, and he said unto them, "You know how it is unlawful." thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company that is a Jew a, a man that is wants. a Jew to keep company or come into someone of another nation and both of us aren't but then Peter said but God has showed me I should not call any man common or unclean sure so are you agreeing that Peter's vision wasn't about food it was about I, fellowship I, between I, Jews I and said, Gentiles I said this at the very beginning yes yeah? So we can't use Peter's vision to justify eating pork then. Right. Because but it weren't about food, it was about fellowship with Jews and Gentiles. So again, um, don't forget that this is being given to Peter, who is a Jew, first yeah. of all. And secondly, the image of the foods. It the, food, it was animals. The, the image of, of the animals mm. to kill and eat does link indeed with what Jesus talked about in Matthew 15. It's not about what goes into a man that makes him unclean, it's what comes out of a man, AKA, if, you, if you, you as a Jewish man are proclaiming that you cannot have fellowship with non-Jews when you are preaching Christ who told you to go out into the world and make disciples of all creatures, yep. then you yep. are sinning out, out, out of your yeah, heart, I right? You. Then that is why mm. I wanted to culminate all this in Acts 15. Because when Paul is there 
and the disciples are there. What proclamation do they make to the Jewish people, to the Gentiles? They don't tell them not to eat pork. They simply specify, don't eat the meat of an animal that has been given over it to says, an idol god. It says, don't eat anything strangled. Or strangled. Or, or blood. Or blood. Um, what, what part of the law do you find any instructions not to eat anything strangled or not to eat blood? What part of the law would you find them specific instructions in? So those are, yes, Levitical right, laws. Okay. However, okay. from the disciples who were with Christ, from Paul who saw Christ on the road to Damascus, he, they have come to the consensus, and we agree that they all have the Holy Spirit. They've come to the consensus that we should not restrict the kind of animals that the Gentiles can eat. Instead, we can just ins uh, restrict the mode Those instructions were in for which Gentiles. the animal is. Those instructions were for Gentiles? Yes, they yeah. were. So, so the Gentiles received instructions not to eat anything strangled, and not blood. to eat anything with blood. Yep. Also and and, and, and you're things. agreeing that those instructions were taken directly out of the Levitical food laws. Sure. Yeah. Or they have their basis there, sure. Yeah, so so they yeah, they have their basis there. So yeah. they were they were the rock they was taken. But the, so the, why would forget. Gentiles be instructed to follow Levitical food laws because if the Levitical food laws were abolished? So don't forget, they're not attempt, they weren't abolished, right. right? But they are no longer the means by which you attain salvation. So, no, I know that. We are saved by grace through faith. Okay. Yeah, not of our works. Okay, of course. so in that yeah. case, yeah. whether or not you eat bacon or not, you are not sitting against God. But why were the Gentiles given instructions to follow Levitical food laws? In so, Acts. So, in for Acts. my understanding, I and believe... What, what verse was it? Acts 15. Acts 15. I believe in Acts 15, Acts 15. They in fact have a discussion where they don't want to overburden the Gentiles. Uh, with, the, with, with the new laws, if you I think, uh, further ahead, it, um, it says that they didn't want to overburden the uh, Gentiles with these new laws, so they stuck to the basics. Right, foundations. Yes. Right, so now, now, now there's controversy because apparently Jesus said you can eat pork, right? Anything, yes. Yeah, sure. But now we're in Acts, which is after Jesus' yes. crucifixion, and we're speaking to Gentiles, yep. so the Levitical food laws apparently is only for Jews. Yep. But now we've got Levitical food laws for Gentiles in Acts. Well, right. So let's no, read Acts we're not giving them Levitical food laws. Well, but certainly, the, certainly the principles that are, that are being <laughs> the principles, yes, the exactly. principles that are, that are being right. given to the, the Gentiles have their basis in Leviticus. In Leviticus. Yes. But I so think that means er, Leviticus er, has early been on in fifteen. It does talk about not wanting to overburden yeah. the, uh, the Gentiles yes. with all these rules and laws. Yeah. So that is why right. circumcision, physically. We don't need to be circumcised. Okay. Of course, I agree. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have Jeremiah, circumcision of, of the heart, all, all that good stuff, right? Circumcision of the foreskin and the heart. Awesome. Yeah. Same thing would also apply to all the other laws. Yeah. Let's read this Acts 15. So it says, Acts yeah. 15, verse 19, Wherefore my sentence is, that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Yes. So if you're a Gentile and you believe in the Messiah, Jesus Christ. We don't want Christ, to trouble you with the Levitical law. That's ours. We don't want to trouble you with, with, the, with the, the full gamut. Well, they haven't of, specified that. But um, what it does say in verse 20 is, but we write to them. So they're writing to the Gentiles and they're telling the Gentiles, if you believe in Jesus and God's accepting you and you're part of this faith, we write to you that you abstain from pollutions of idols, from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. So the Gentiles have received a letter to follow those instructions. For Moses of old time have in every city them that preacheth him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. So they're even still talking about Sabbath days, and Moses. So they've mentioned food laws from Leviticus and they've quoted Moses. Why is Moses being quoted and why are they being given instructions from one of Moses's Levitical food laws? And if we carry on and we go down to verse 29, they emphasize this again. So it's so important for Gentiles to follow the Levitical food laws of Moses as it has just been Not read out. Not the full says, gamut. That ye abstain from meat offered to idols, from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, which if you keep these yourself, you shall do well. Fair so you if well. you abstain from blood, which is from the Levitical food law, if you abstain from things strangled, which is from the Levitical food law, and if you abstain from meats offered to idols, 
you should do well. And this is instructions to Gentiles. And this is this is in Acts 15, 29. So that clearly shows me that they're quoting Moses and they're giving instructions to Gentiles to follow okay. Levitical food laws. Well, I think the problem remains... That shows that Jesus didn't mean pork the, when he said the, all foods the problem, are clean. The problem remains, is it talking about specific portions or the entire thing? Because even today, uh, the rabbinic Jews, um, they don't proselytize because they believe that they have their 613 odd rules to follow. Mm. And that all Those Gentiles... Those 613 laws are not for everyone. Yeah, they, they believe that, that a lot uh, that, of that, that is for priests and women and farmers and judges and sovereigns and lepers. So and there's certain, yeah. So they they, well, they they have to hold to these rules, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. As, as, Just as, so you as know, being, as only forty one percent of those six hundred and thirteen laws. Okay. Which should be for everyone. What's forty one percent of six hundred and thirteen? It's at least two hundred and something laws. Two hundred eighty something. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. that's for everyone. The, the reason mm. why uh, Jews of today don't process lies is because they say that all we need as Gentiles is to follow the seven no hide laws so even at that they realize and also the, the but, but, but we're, we're not gonna get to 200 or hopefully with, with those right <laughs> but, but ultimately what, what ends up happening from there is that they even realize that their religion is bothersome in regards to the rules and regulations so even when they want to interact with Gentiles, they also don't want to burden them with all those rules. And the disciples had the same that thoughts in the first century. Do you know what? I don't think the laws are burdensome because they're moral and they're, and they're, they're, they're well, laws for us to be sanctified from the heathens, from the pagans, Moses from came the with Canaanite 10. tribes. Moses came with 10. Yeah, 10 and commandments. Moses came with 10 mm. and, in, and initially that was all there was. But because they kept having questions and going through interactions in the wilderness, more and more derived from the ten. Right? Because of the reason why they are so plentiful in their rules, and the reason why you even have today in like the, the Talmud rabbis debating on every possible topic, is because new interactions keep coming in, and then re require new deviations and new subcategories to be made from the ten. We do not live under a legalistic framework where only by following these strict laws and actions can we attain salvation. We can live our lives, be in our cultures, but submit to Christ and his tenets. Love and love thy God, love your neighbor. Um, what was the question? There wasn't really a question, it was more of a statement that ultimately I will say for the fourth time. So you say we're not under what, the law. We are not under the law in the or sense. What, what law specifically? Are so we not we're under? not under the Mosaic law. We are under the law of Christ. Right. And the Mosaic law was nothing more than a pointer. Right. Okay. To Christ. So what scripture? Paul talks about you, this. What, what scripture does Paul talk about this? We're not under the law. So there's the there's the. Are stretch, you referring to Romans? Uh, it might be Romans uh, when he talks about the about, about the veil that Moses was seeing through. It, that was a shadow of things to come. Let me pull that up. So we're not under the Mosaic law? Nope. But why do we still not murder? Why? So, so that, that is a Mosaic law. That so is the law of Moses. That in the Mosaic law, law yeah. specifically, I'm, I'm speaking of the, the, the derivations that come from the ten. So the ten mm. are applied for, for all, all of humanity. All mankind. Yep. Yeah. And then these 600 odd don'ts. No, so 41% of the 613 do apply to everyone. I've, got, I've, I've, I've looked into this because I was being very lazy and I just wanted to listen to people tell me what it means. But then I thought, hang on a minute, if I was going for a mortgage, I wouldn't just take advice so this from... So is this is 1 Corinthians 15? Oh, there's multiple places. Uh, so you have um, Ephesians 2.15. Having abolished in the flesh and anonymity, even the law, uh, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself a twain, one of new, so uh, making peace. Right. So, 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 what does that, so what does that summarize what that means? So I would need to read the full context for that in yeah. Ephesians. But the one because I was what it says, it was says ordinances. It says ordinances. So the sayings and the, and the, and the, and the so words, that, yes. Is, are you, so that's not saying the commandments are abolished, is it? The commandments are not abolished. And we not, obviously know that. Incumbent we know that. on the believers. So what, yeah, so what is an ordinance? Uh, like a saying. Uh, uh, what, an ordinance is the same as a commandment? 
Um, there can be commandments and ordinances. Oh, whoa, okay. No, there can be commandments and ordinances. Because what, what that scripture there says is the commandments of ordinances have been abolished. But my understanding of what an ordinance is, it's like a little sub law. It's not like a main law, like thou shall not murder. It's like a little mini law. Like a bylaw. Like a bylaw, yes. But when we read this Ephesians 2.15, whatever it is, and it says it's abolished the commandments of ordinances, people are thinking the commandments have been abolished, not knowing what ordinances they, actually mean. They haven't not been abolished. Not perception, it's not to do with perception, it's to do with knowledge or lack They of. haven't been ab abolished, they have been completed in Christ. What's completed in Christ? The the uh, the um, the law uh, to, that came before the law so, of so, Moses. So, so when you're talking about that, you mean about the old covenant and the new covenant? Yeah, because don't forget that the law was there to attain salvation. Now you no longer attain by the law, the but through Christ. What was the old covenant? The old covenant. Well, it depends. There's many old covenants. But, um, you're, well, but going from covenant, the old one to the new one specifically. There's what many was, old covenants. There's a covenant with David, a covenant yeah. with children of Israel, yeah. a covenant with Abraham, a covenant with Noah. But what law was now to the cross? What law did Jesus take with him, nailing it to the cross? I'm not sure you mean by that. Yeah, so so there's a scripture that says there was a law now to the cross. Okay. Yeah. And what's it referring to? It's referring to the sacrificial law. Okay, so, yeah. so that I'll, I'll be under the mosaic system, sure. Well, so, so there's no more sacrifices. Okay, so when people read the scripture and it says the law was now to the cross, they're assuming that is all law. But the whole point in Jesus coming and fulfilling all the laws and not abolishing any of them, not abolishing any laws, but fulfilling them. He had to fulfill the laws because he couldn't yeah, have any sin. The word fulfillment means complete. Yeah, he completed so the laws them. are completed in we Jesus. We haven't. Yeah, no, it's finished. It's finished. So we no longer need, to, need to, to, to try to follow those laws, follow Christ instead. Yeah, I think, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding. That, that, that's why he calls us up a way. He is that bridge, that road for us yeah. to, to, to uh, travel upon. So the new covenant is what? The new covenant is the covenant of Christ. A, an everlasting covenant that will never be broken. The covenant that by believing in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, yeah. that you will attain eternal life. But no, but what is the new covenant specifically? That is the new covenant. A covenant is an agreement between, between multiple parties. Right. So the covenant now is that we follow the rules and tenets of Jesus Christ given to his disciples. Okay. And he will grant us eternal life if we do. Can I, can I just share a little bit of what I've read on that? Go for it. The new covenant is found in the book of Hebrews and it is in specifically the chapters 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. The new covenant specifies very specifically what the new covenant is. Okay, so in the old covenant was the sacrificial system where the Levitical priests used to do the atonement of sins by sacrificing animals on the altar and burnt offerings, yeah? That is the old covenant of the way we used to atone for our sins. Jesus came and fulfilled all the laws so he could be sinless and perfect. So he could be the perfect sacrificial lamb, okay? He was sacrificed, he died on a cross for our sins. And if you read Hebrews 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10, it tells you what the new covenant is. And it is the priestlyhood that changed. It went from the order of the Levitical priestlyhood to the order of Melchizedek. And that is the new covenant, the order of Melchizedek. And that is the sacrificial system is no longer active because Jesus died once and for all and forever. And we get, we get forgiveness of our sins through Jesus Christ. That is the new covenant. And if you guys at home watching this want to read it up yourself, Hebrews 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10, that is a new covenant and it specifies the only thing that changed in the Holy Scriptures, in the new covenant, is the priestlyhoods changed. It went to the order of Melchizedek, the priestlyhood changed. And that's why it's so important that we read ourselves, read our Bibles, stop being lazy, Stop watching videos on YouTube and learning about things. Read what the new covenant is. Find out what laws were abolished. Find out what laws were now to the cross because people like to use Romans 6.14 and go, oh, Paul says we're not under the law, we're under grace. 
you know what Lord Paul was talking about in Romans 6.14 when he said we're not under the law, we're under grace? I would assume it's still the laws according all the to laws, Moses. All the laws according to Moses. Okay, you guys at home, read Romans 6.14, read Romans and find out what law specifically Paul was talking about when he said we're not under the law, we're under grace. Because it's really important that we actually are responsible for our relationship and our salvation and our knowledge. And I'll tell you what, there's seven laws or seven types of law what Paul speaks about, okay? Paul speaks about the law of God in Romans, in Romans chapter 331, he mentions it in Romans 7, 22, 25, and he mentions it in Romans 8, 7. Paul also speaks about another law called the law of sin. And he mentions that in Romans 7, 23 to 25. Paul also talks about another law called the law of sin and death. And he mentions that in Romans 8, verses number 2. Paul also talks about the law of the spirit of life. And that's also mentioned in Romans 8. He also talks about the law of faith in Romans 3, verse 27. He also mentions the law of righteousness in Romans 9, 31. He also mentions the law of Christ in 1 Corinthians 9.21. So when, when Paul is talking about, for sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under the law but under grace, Romans 6.14, what law is he talking about? Because from my investigation, my independent research into this, he is talking about the law of sin. You are no longer under the law of sin you are under grace. He's not saying you're no longer under any 613 laws and let's go and live a lawless life. Because Jesus says in Matthew, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Lord, Lord. You know, not everyone who says Lord, Lord will enter into the kingdom, but he that does the will of my Father. For, and they will say, we've prophesied in your name. Who prophesies in the name of Jesus? It's not Muslims, it's not Hindus, it's not Jews, it's Christians. Christians prophesy in the name of Jesus. That's right. Who does well, many wonders in the name of Jesus? Christians do many wonders in the name of Jesus. Um, and who casts out demons in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach? <coughs> who casts out demons in the name of Jesus? Well, even in the Christians Bible, do. we have examples But Jesus of, says, depart from me, well, you who that's, practice that's lawlessness. Wrong. So Jesus doesn't like people yeah, who lawlessness. practice lawlessness. Amen. So that shows Jesus doesn't like people that practice lawlessness. So, so, then, so then Paul hasn't, Paul's not saying we're not under all the laws. Paul's talking about we're not under the law of sin. Read it yourselves guys. Read your Bibles. So you said a lot there. Yes. And one thing you said that I found funny was you said who casts out demons in the, in the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Right. If you recall, there's an instance where the disciples come to Jesus and they report some people who have been casting out demons in the name of Jesus, but they're not his followers. And Jesus said, if they're not against us, then they are for us. So, even in the first century, there were people who were not followers of Jesus, who were not Christians, who were casting out demons in his name. What about so, doing many wonders and well, there's prophesying, there's prophesying, prophesying there are in the name of Jesus. different categories. There are different categories. Only Christians prophesy in the name there of Jesus. There are different Jesus. categories, and not all of them will apply to a single person. So they're, well, they're, they're, they're included in the category. So here's what I would say. There are people, Christians and the like, who hold Jesus in very high standing who are not Christians. For example, certain Muslims hold Jesus in very high standing, All right. right? And then they, they, they don't prophesy in the name of Jesus. They might not do that, but they <laughs> might do other things, for example, yeah. in the name of Jesus. For example, they believe that they can simply just read the Quran and cast out demons from people. They might read sections where only Jesus is speaking, for example, right? So ultimately, and not to mention, there are uh, Mormons who can believe in Jesus, JWs. These people aren't Christians, but they believe that they, are, they have the true Jesus with them. So ultimately, there's a wide expanse of people who will claim uh, notionally to believe in Jesus, but they don't actually do so. And those are the people who will be rejected. When it comes to which law is being spoken about, again, there is no instance by what which... law is in Romans 6.14 when Paul said you're not under the law, you're any, under grace? Any of the laws that, that you mentioned, right? So he is writing to the Romans. The Romans are not Jews. They are Gentiles. But there's seven so, types of law that Paul has specified 
Okay. We need to know he what law is he, he referring he ca- he to. He categorizes them, which is great. But forget not that Paul never tells them that they have to follow the law of Moses. Because they don't even he know. He didn't say Moses. They don't know who Moses is. So also Paul hasn't specified you don't, you're not under the law of Moses. Right, but I think the, the problem comes from the fact that you read the text and then you are insistent on carrying over the Levitical laws to a population that don't understand their context. <coughs> so lawlessness does not mean lacking of Levitical laws. The Levitical laws are for a specific people in a certain time, in a certain place. They're not for the entire world. That is what the new covenant is for. The new covenant just means there's a, there's no sacrificial system in place. If you can read it in Hebrews, it doesn't okay. specify anything else apart from sacrificial laws being abolished. Is this a salvation issue? No. No. But it, it can as well. Is this, is that, is you? Do we have to keep the law to be saved? No. Okay, then, then that's We're not saved point. by grace through faith, right, not like of our works. Says, man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. The law must read. Well, then, but you, then you read Daniel. One law. Faith, <laughs> of that, faith of that works is dead. So read, James. read Daniel. James, sorry. Right, but read Romans 4, where J- uh, Paul says, if Abraham were ju- uh, justified by works, he has way of the glory, but not before God. And he says, what does he say? In verse, Find the scripture. In verse 5. Get the scripture. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. It's not salvation issue, so I don't know what I'm arguing. You can eat pork if you want to, it's fine. Just make sure it's, it's done well. I don't really like pork personally. I have bacon on my burgers sometimes, but that's it. And but to him that worketh not, work not, but believe it on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Faith, ca- carry on reading. Read all of it. Okay, so I mean, all of Romans 4. Okay, you tell me what this Because it says that Abraham was justified by his works. No, well, that's, you're talking about James, and James asks the question in James 2.21. Yeah, but right? let's not miss out any scriptures. Right, let's well, read let's all of it. Harmonize that with Romans 4. Yeah, right? harmonize it. If Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God, and he was counted unto him for righteousness. Mm-hmm. Why was he counted for righteousness? For his belief and faith. And f- now, yeah, now okay. to him that worketh is the reward, not the record of grace, but of death. But to him that worketh not, but believeth in him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describes the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputes righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Should I continue? It's quite well, it says in James 2, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Yeah? So if you have faith and you've got no works, it's dead. Do you agree? So I, I agree that faith produces works, but I would never yeah. say that it's the works that saves us. No, no one's saying that. Okay, that's good then. But you can't have faith and then sit at uh, home and, and not uh, have any works. What, 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 oh, it's the important faith thing. On the cross. What, what, yeah, works <laughs> can are... I, can I finish the scripture? Works are not restricted to physical action. Okay. Take, for example, what if you're a quadriplegic, right. a.k.a. you can't move from the neck down, and in your hospital bed, you accept Christ. Well, you can't even start digging walls in Africa. Right. So what works do you have? Right. Even your faith can be counted to you as a good work. Can I, let me read the scripture because this is quite important and it's going to unify with what I'm saying. Yeah. So it says, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified, justified by works when he offered Isaac his son up unto the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect so what does paul then mean i mean because we have to harmonize it right we can't have just a blatant contradiction right so what does paul mean then when he says if abraham were justified by works he has wear off to glory but not before god i mean we have you, to you can't have faith without that works. gentlemen but, you can't have faith shall works. we wrap things up yeah go on so I, can I just want to sing this? I would say it, in order a one way to at least harmonize it. I don't say I'm not saying the only way, but you could try other ways. But the way I would harmonize it is James is talking about being justified in the eyes of men. Paul is talking about being justified in the eyes of God. God sees the heart. Men don't see your heart, and that's one way to reconcile it. Okay, I, I would say that works don't have to be physical activity. Fair enough. I mean, that, yeah, they, they can be spiritual works. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It does produce something good. Okay, John, first John talks about that. Yeah. Simple as that. Uh, uh, for, for, for example, uh, um, on, the, on, on the cross, 
How did the, the thief achieve salvation? He accepted Christ. He had faith in Christ. He, he disparaged the people who were insulting Christ. Right? So just for what? Th three sentences? He saved? It counts as it's good works to him. Faith is a work. The moment we say that it's like faith plus works to, that saves you, that the kind of salvation hangs on your work, then it can so make one wake like, okay, what exactly is the works do I need to follow? Yeah. Exactly how much work? Yeah. Because if you're gonna say it's plus works, you have to be exactly specific because I, it's in heaven and hell. I, I, I think right? the biggest issue is that people overblow what works mean. It doesn't mean digging walls in Africa. That's what, that's what all good works are. But we need to know it includes exactly, them, right? but also there are non-physical works. But we need that's to all. know what's the minimum requirement. I mean, faith. I agree. Well, faith. Yeah, but faith without works is dead. But then what counts as a work? Is you it only physical me. labor? You tell me. It's only physical labor. Well, what does the scripture say? Well, for example, we have, a, we, we have the instances. What happened with the thief on the cross? What physical work did he do? Nothing. He was dying, actually. But if I if I if I practice Sabbath, is that works? Sorry. If I practice Sabbath, is that work? Well, we are commanded to obey the Sabbath, right? Understanding that it is, that it is not uh, a death sentence if we do not, but also like, like you can you read in Hebrews, we are now in the eternal rest. So Ooh. every every day what, for now? us, yes, we're in the eternal rest now. Yep. Every you sure? every day for us is the Sabbath. Why should I believe All right, and are you but but sure but, but in then the eternal rest? because I've got scripture here that I've been reading hold recently. Hold on, because historically <laughs> Jesus rises on a Sunday, <laughs> we then choose that day to commemorate <laughs> from uh, uh, our Sabbath and also distinguish ourselves from the Jews. So I've got scripture that might suggest we're not entered that rest yet. I've got a scripture here because it's in it's in Hebrews so four eleven. I am not talking about the rest regarding. Uh, like eternal life in heaven. Yeah. What I mean is from the point of death and the cross and resurrection, we the Sabbath is no longer just a, a certain day. It's now every day of the week. Um, so avoiding sin is a word just in that previous yeah, question. That's true. I mean, it's quite, quite exhaustive. Yeah. I mean, gonna... But we, we don't do that thing Muslims do where, where we like count points. Oh, you, you, you talk about sinning but didn't sin? Ten points. Yeah, we, we, we don't do that. Right? No, of course. Get on the treadmill. Right. Yeah, yeah, just stay, just stay. <laughs> right? Yes. So, okay, shall yeah, we go? So, 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 where did we get to at the end? What was the end conclusion? Bacon, bacon, bacon's halal. It's bacon's halal. It's, it's all good, man. But is it, is it kosher? Uh, no. No. But it's, it's there halal. There you go. So, so, Jesus wouldn't eat pork. I don't eat pork because Jesus wouldn't have had Do you drink alcohol by any chance? No, I don't drink alcohol. Ever? No, I'm teetotal. Do you drink orange juice? Yeah, of course. Did Jesus have orange juice? I'm not sure. Okay, probably not. Yeah. So, can you have orange juice? Well, it's he not didn't have specified. It. It's not specified, but pork is actually specifically specified exclusively as unclean. It is said that it defiles you. And let me finish on this. Uh, go let for it. Let me finish on this last bit of beautiful scripture, right? If let's read Isaiah. If you go to Isaiah 66. After a while. <laughs> if you go to Isaiah 66 and verse 15, right? So it says, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by with fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves, that means self-righteous, yeah? They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in gardens behind one tree in the mist, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, says the Lord. So this is a prophecy from Isaiah prophesying about end times when everyone gets judged by the word and it says those that are eating swine's flesh will be judged and they will be consumed with the abomination. You so need if pork's to understand clean, if that's uh, literal or not literal. Well, it says swine's flesh is an abomination and whoever eats it will be judged by the Lord in end times and that is Isaiah 66, 15 down to 17. So there you go, I rest my case. Your, your, your reading of it is very literal, I think. And the imagery described doesn't sound very literal to me. 
it, it, so, so for example, is God literally coming on a literal chariot? But he did say swine's flesh. He specifies sure. swine's flesh. So, God doesn't like swine's flesh, and he doesn't like. So like I, I think all. swine's flesh represents something spiritual yeah. uncleanliness. What about Leviticus? But no longer are we bound by that motif. But then why did the Gentiles receive clear instructions to abide by the Levitical food laws and not eat things strangled well, and not we, eat blood and not we eat read meat it ourselves. and sacrifice unto we, idols? We read it, we read it uh, together and there was only a selection of things from those laws. That yeah, was but all. it doesn't say anywhere else that you should not engage in bestiality. But does that mean that because it hasn't been specified, does that mean that it's no longer... Doesn't Paul talk about bestiality or is it me? Doesn't Paul talk about bestiality or is it me? No? Doesn't Paul talk about bestiality? Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, somewhere. But I'm sure Paul clarified that. But again, we, we will never have an exhaustive list of things that we can and cannot do as Christians. Because ultimately, the world changes. Culture changes. Yeah, but the things standards change. are biblical standards. Yes. And so godly standards. We can derive what to do in a scenario, but, uh, uh, whatever time period we're in, based upon what's in the Bible. Absolutely. Yeah. However, Bacon will not have you burning in hell, okay? Yeah. All I know is I've got biblical standards, All right. and I like biblical standards, and I don't choose to follow modern day standards well, because modern your, day standards your are anti-biblical. Your interpretive method, I think, could use some work. For example, maybe find find like some early Christian writer or church father who agrees with you, and, and then bring that, no, maybe. because they all celebrate Christmas, and I don't believe in Christmas either. So. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay, okay, fine. There's sure. no instructions in the Bible that tells me to observe Christmas. But there's no instructions in the Bible for a birthday or, or, or New yeah, Year's Day. I'm not interested in birthdays either. If it's not biblical, I'm not Okay, interested. so then, then, then oh, all you... their traditions are men. So then, then, what, are men. all you celebrate is what, Passover? Well, what, whatever, well, whatever biblical celebrations there are that are um, in the Bible, I would observe them. If they're not in the Bible, I won't. So, well, when did you do Passover? Well, I'm new to this, so when it happens, I'll, 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 I'll okay. look into it. All right. But I won't be celebrating Christmas this year, I'll tell you that. Listen, you don't need Jeremiah to... 10.4 says, don't take the tree into your home and decorate it with gold and silver. And it's not referring to Christmas at that time because there was no Christmas at that time. So, but... It the was Bible talking says, about idols. Yeah. And Do not have an silver. idol in your home. Mm. A Christmas tree is not an idol. It's a decorative piece. Well, the Bible says in Jeremiah 10, 4, Do not take the tree into your home like the pagans do and decorate it with gold and silver. So what does people do on Christmas with okay. a tree? Wait, so there's wait, biblical wait, instructions wait. not to do that. Okay, again, it's your method of interpretation I find fault with. I've got when, a biblical method of interpretation. No, you don't. What you're doing is you're, you're ascribing <laughs> nah, something nah. that's mentioned in the Bible and then you're basically um, completely uh, removing it from its context. The pagans weren't having Christmas trees. They had idols, yeah. graven images in their house. Yeah, a, a Christmas tree decorated tree. with gold and silver. That's what everybody does on a Christmas, Christmas Day. tree is not an idol. It's a tree. Yeah, but according to the biblical standards, it's an idol. No, it's not. Okay. Because an, an idol is a graven image of a false god. Which god is being worshipped on Christmas Day with a Christmas tree? According ah. to biblical, according to biblical standards, a, a tree decorated with gold and silver is forbidden think, to go into your house. Think about something like the brazen bull. Oh, so, 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 sorry, uh, uh, the, golden the, the, the golden cow. Sorry, that's, yeah. that's a different thing. Yeah. Think about the golden cow. That's a representation of worshipping mammon. Oh, okay. But Financial worship in money. It was a physical object. It was a physical Made object. Made of physical gold. Yes, it was. Okay, in the form of a, of a bowl. Yeah. Okay, great. Think about that, but with, with, with wood. Yeah. That is not a Christmas tree. Yeah, but they've been very specific with a tree decorated with gold and silver. It says, do not decorate a gold, a, a tree with gold and silver and bring it into your home. Like the pagans do. Okay, but no. So it's quite a clear but, cut but instruction. No, no, isn't it? Okay, but notice that Christmas trees are bought into the home, then decorators, not the other way around. So does that does that count? What if they're delivered from Amazon? If you want to be anti-biblical, you know, it's cool. I but to to say that the Bible is talking about Christmas trees, I think is a stretch. Oh no, it's not talking about Christmas trees because Christmas weren't invented then. It weren't invented until years after. Hey, it, it, it could have been a prophecy. All right, cool. Anyway. Let's wrap up. Christ yeah. Mass. Ladies and gentlemen. No such thing as Christmas. It's unbiblical, my friends. 
Lin it's unbiblical. Lin it's actually yeah. Tammuz worship. Google Tammuz, who died on the 25th of December, and they read the prophecies in Ezekiel, yeah, that talk about um, women weeping for Tammuz. Okay, and then and then look at what what's going on. Pagan customs. You got whip. You got Tammuz dying on the 25th of December. You got people taking trees into their house and decorating it with gold and silver. Like Christmas is a pagan, anti-biblical, anti-Christ, unbiblical celebration. For it to be a uh, Tammuz. Yeah, 23rd to the 25th. Winter solstice. Winter solstice. Who the hell's Tamu? Tamu is in Ezekiel. Is in Ezekiel. Okay. Read yeah, up on it. Read Ezekiel. Wait, but read Ezekiel. How would you know Tamu died in that time? How do you know Chris? Yeah, how do you know Jesus, Jesus died on the twenty fifth of December? That's that's what we say. Uh, uh, it, it's Jesus, a day Jesus, remember for, for the commission of his birth. No, not There's his no death. proof that Jesus died on the twenty fifth. No, it, December. it's a day for the commemoration of another thing. So we don't know the exact it's time. It's also a commemorative day for Tammuz. Okay, so... <laughs> that, that Ezekiel tells us that it's an abomination if here. you weep for him. Here's the other issue. Whatever, whatever day of the year you pick for a celebration, there's likely a corresponding pagan event going on yeah. at that time. So just because there's a pagan event going on at any given day of the year doesn't that mean that you cannot celebrate something else on that day of the year? Uh, all I know is... There's no instruction in the Bible for me to recognize 25th of December as a It's as not Jesus an instruction. Is, it's Jesus an optional birthday. activity that isn't going to wind up and I opt out of that. Fair enough. Because it's not biblical. Okay. Uh, le less legalism, more crisis. It's, it's not my closest statement. Here you go. All I say is read your own Bibles yourself and stop following people on YouTube and, and, and being lazy and using their interpretation. If read your Bibles. If you're new to the faith, join a church, please. And, and Don't go to guidance. any lawless church that celebrates Christmas and allows you to eat pork. That is lawlessness. That is called antinomianism. It is a doctrine and people are practicing antinomianism without even knowing it. Antinomian means against the law. Calvinism, Marcionism and antinomianism. The churches have been hijacked. Christianity has been hijacked by the serpent. And if you read... If you read the story of Adam and Eve, it was the serpent that deceived Eve and tried to get her to disobey the commandments of God. Okay, only the serpent would uh, try to deceive you to disobey the commandments of God. And it is the ancient serpent that is still around now. The ancient serpent has got more craftiness than anyone could ever imagine. And if the serpent could deceive Eve, it can definitely deceive you. Yeah? Only the serpent wants you to disobey God's commandments and God's laws. Only the serpent. And I'll read this last little bit of scripture. Because we need to remember. We need to remember our foundations. And if we're only New Testament Christians, then we ain't got no, we ain't got no foundation. The Old Testament is the foundation. Don't mix conspiracy and Christianity. All right, let me read some beautiful scripture. This is beautiful scripture, and it is from Joshua 22, 5, and it says, But take diligent heed to do the commandments and the law, which Moses, the servant of God, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. That is a beautiful scripture, Joshua 22, five. Do all his ways, all his commandments and follow all the law. Amen, well, that, Amen. Was, that, that, that was the Jews. All right, everyone. There is no Jew, there is no Greek. Read, read Romans and it says, there is no Jew or Gentile, there is no Jew or Greek. We are all one, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God. There is no Jew or Greek. We are wild olive branches grafted into the natural olive tree. And we boast not against the root. Read Ephesians 12. All right. A Mate, a that's a dead soundtrack. A amen. That's dead. That is dead. That's dead. That's All dead, right. Mate. And that's actually quite, quite um, immature as well. Very immature. Look at your face. Come get your face on camera. Let everyone see how awkward you you look now. Let's not let, let's not end on a bad oh, note. He's hiding his face. 
awkward. Let's not end on playing a bad note. immature soundtracks. It's awkward. just the X Files. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Come on, anyway, come on. Anyway, listen, go. I've enjoyed talking All to right, you, though, mate. Uh, uh, salam okay, and, and go, 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 have, go have some bacon. Uh, mm, yeah. All right. I don't All know about done. That. That's actually immature as well. No, I'm going to for no, that no, 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 I was no. going to shake your hand. But Don't worry, my, 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 hand, at the last my, my hand's cold. <laughs> here you go. Nice one. Thank all right. You. And join the church, please. No, mate. They're all antinomianists. Um, anti, antinomianists. Antinomian. Google the meaning, guys. Because you, 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 you mentioned Calvinism and Marcionism. Calvinism, Marcionism. Those are two different things. Antinomianism. Uh, and people I've, don't I've even know that Christianity has been hijacked by the serpent. Look at the Pope. Look what the Pope's doing. Look what's happening in all these lawless churches, mate. Hey, uh, a, a belief that rejects legalism. The, Torah, the law. No, uh, uh, it rejects legalism uh, and the moral, religious, or social um, social norms. I don't believe oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yo, you gonna head out or you wanna come and eat? Let's go now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.